take up one idea make that one idea your life think of it dream of it live on that idea let the brain muscles nerves every part of your body be full of that idea and just leave every other idea alone this is the way to success with this motivating note of swami vivekananda i wish you all a very happy noon we are all born with a divine fire in us i a first should be to give wings to the fire and fill the world with the glow of its goodness i am elated to render a hearty welcome to our honorable chairman sir a pioneer of education our respected director sir and director academics ma'am and our chief guest mrs bamadi ma'am indian administrative officer retired and mr aman kumar dube professor of management motivational speaker civil service coach our lovable principal ma'am all the educators of our sister concern and vkp and all our junior ias aspirants to this wonderful and interesting session where you can grab this opportunity and set a trail to explore into the civil service welcome 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 as of to the words of einstein genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work many aspirants think that only those having inborn talent can become ias officers but this is not true it is only with your sheer heart you can succeed in the civil service exam with only your persistent and disciplined hard work you can complete the huge syllabus and succeed in the exam the above words were made true by our chief guest mrs bamadi who belongs to 1979 batch ias of the bihar cadre and i am very proud to say that mam has served and did a lot to the society and see uh, super noted on retirement in the rank of secretary to government of india in august 2013 and to join the central administrative tribunal in october 2013 besides serving in government of bihar in various capacities has served in the government of india in the minister ministry of home affairs the ministry of rural department panchayat raj drinking water and sanitation and land resources of the government of india priya to that mama served in the ministry of women and child development department government of india on second man by government has worked with bilateral and multilateral bodies such as unicef dani danida unfpa and undb regional office of south and southeast asia on issues such as gender reproductive health female feticide population policies hiv aids unsafe mobility including trafficking and migration and mam has worked over the last two decades on the issue of anti human trafficking and worked very closely with ngos and civil society partners various commissions for women human rights and child rights at the center and in the states in collaboration with the chief justice has organized judicial colloquia on human trafficking in several states during 2010 to 2012 and mam has also written and published materials in her areas of expertise and recently i'm really very proud to say that mam has been awarded with the lifetime achievement award for contribution to combat human trafficking in india by the us council general kolkata has been widely consulted by government ngos un and multilateral bodies nationally and internationally i am really proud and privileged to invite our guest mrs bamadi ma'am to take over this virtual session please ma'am thank you thank you uh, sheila i'm really very very happy to be in your midst today and i want to at the outset congratulate this great institution for catching you all young you know when they say catch you young to come into the civil services it's very important that we groom ourselves we mentor the children we coach the children we encourage the children we support the children we give them all the materials bring all the resources to speak to them so this is something that very few institutions do so my great hearty congratulations to the <clears throat> management and to all those who are working in this direction now children 
at every stage in life we have to work for what we want to get we have to work for our dreams in school you want to get marks so you work towards it right so effort is a very important aspect of all that we do now why is it so important to talk about this team when you're talking to civil service aspirants do you know there are at least 20 25 lakh people 25 can you believe this who appear for the exams ias exams ias ips all put together and finally only about 10000 people are selected for various services you have the indian foreign service then you have the indian administrative service then you have the indian police service then there are a number of services called audit service income tax service revenue service custom service so like that about 10000 people alone make it finally so it's a very very highly competitive atmosphere that we have to work in so it's not that just as mishila said it's not just that oh you worked for one year before the exams and you have got through it's not going to be that easy let's admit that it's a challenge but no challenge is beyond any of us if we are prepared to put in all the effort every body or every nerve of your body as she said all parts of your body everything is focused to concentration full attention this is a story of how of two frogs now you want to you have to decide whether you want to be hoppy or whether you want to be hopper what do you want to be i can lip read you can say you want to be hoppy or hopper hopper hoppy you know there is a story of another story about hoppy you know, there was a there was a fox which tried to get grapes from the vineyard it jumped and jumped and jumped and then when it could not reach he said in the palam pulikom chi chi in the palam pulikom so he gave up efforts like that hoppy gave up efforts but hopper did not get efforts give up the efforts he kept on striving and that is the power of survival those who work towards their dreams survive they can survive under any circumstances you know there are many children there are many people in the ias and in ifs also who are completely blind and they have made it and they have made it to the service they are very senior ias of ips officers ifs officers there are many people who come from very poor background they may not have even have parents to live with they may be living with some guardians they may not be having enough income but still those people said i will not die there is a son of an auto rickshaw driver who comes into the ias so whether you are economically in this or that background you may be very poor family doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all your effort is what matters there are many people who come from very rich families but you know they also have difficulties the mummy papa will say aap you finished your ba you get married but you want to do ias suppose you want to do ias and your family says no no our custom is the girl should get married at this age you have to struggle you have to say no i want to make a mark in my life i can get married any time later but i want to study so whether you are from rich background or poor background whether you are fully able bodied or whether you are you know you have you are disabled nothing 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 matters no other circumstance it's all in the mind 
it's all in the mind in the mind you have decided that i have to come i will come i will work for it i won't say i must pass i will work for it i will work for it i will put my whole heart whole effort into this you know i'll tell you a small story about my own you know when i came into the uh, you know the service and i was preparing for my exams my people used to joke they say you know i was used to be studying sitting on the bed and there was a time when i was now i used to sit on a chair but at one time i was sitting on the bed now under the bed you have these rods right you have these flat wooden rods one of the rods slipped from one end and fell down then one or two fell down and i had fallen down the bed but everybody came from the house everybody came running into the room to see what has happened what has happened some noise has come came and then they saw i was still studying with my book in my hand <laughs> so that is the kind of concentration that is required children so are you ready for this kind of concentration you are ready that is the kind of one pointedness right now i'm going to show you what else it takes is it just effort sheila ji just said it's 90% effort perspiration inspiration nice see that little child he must be less than 1 year right less than 1 year forget where which temple or what it is see the single pointedness of that child first thing is to decide to even walk up to say okay if we can okay if i i don't want to walk i'll stay back you all go do darshan and come that's also possible otherwise you will say okay give me a dolly i'll sit on a dolly and walk or half way through you will feel tired you will say i want water did this child take any water going up to up to the top even something so essential as water the child did not take it kept on going it never looked tired now we have to come to the secret of that part i'll come to that later when there was some shop having malas you know some trinkets were there what did the child do it was folding its hands and sitting but it never asked for buying the mala it must might be a boy i don't know if it's a boy or a girl but it looks like a boy obviously it didn't ask for buying that mala it was still restrained sitting there with folded hands so again there's a second secret we'll come to that we'll reveal that secret little later the third thing <clears throat> when it came to the there were some leaves on the way people had dropped some or some waste maybe <clears throat> what did the child do it removed the leaves from out of the way let us look at it suppose there's a waste this is swachhata abhiyan is going on in our country we all spit we throw waste we do everything to pollute the atmosphere what did this child do who taught this child that this waste has to be removed and thrown out was it doing any help to itself it was doing help to the public there was a public spirit spirit in that child right and it never no let up till it reached the top it kept moving 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 now what is the secret of this child it made effort to climb no doubt the child made the effort to climb which was a phenomenal effort for a less than a year for an infant you may run up at your age you may run up young boys and girls can run up but for a child less than 1 year to go up there must have been some inner strength there was inner strength in the child or not the child was devoted to some god it may be krishna it may be jesus it may be anybody prophet anybody it may be buddha may be. but the child had that shraddha shraddha for what it was climbing 
i must climb i must climb i must see the god this is the child was holding that energy within this within its heart so there was passion in the child to finish the climb along with effort the child showed passion so what you require is is just not sitting and studying and reading it means that you have to bring your whole inner strength to work through whatever you're doing so passion is a very important quality along with effort that's why they say 90% 90% perspiration workout strain sweat it out if you look at it like a gym yes you have to sweat it out but then there is that inner strength which gives the child the strength the momentum the alertness alertness pulling away the leaves could have moved over the leaves and gone up pulled away the pushed away the leaves this child to me is truly an ias aspirant if this child goes on in life with this kind of effort and with this kind of passion the child will surely make it because it's a combination of effort and grace grace of the whoever you believe in so given when i told you in the beginning there are more than 25 lakh people appearing by the time they finish the prelims it's just say some 3 to 4 lakhs and after you the written exam comes there are about another 50 60000 coming for interviews and then after the interviews we have something like 500 in the I, ifs ias ips and then another 500 in other services not more than 10 to 12000 so look at this look at this what is the kind of what is the magnitude of effort what is the magnitude of the challenge that we have to put you may or may not get it you have to work with the belief that you are working to get it if you don't get it you also should see that it's a calculated risk that you are taking let me tell you one thing preparing for the indian administrative for civil services exams not only gives you knowledge it gives you the capacity to search for knowledge in a proper way what is it that you want to know you will be very focused on exactly what you want to know it gives you focus it gives you analytical ability it you are able to analyze everything using your own thinking powers and then you are going to meet people like us you are going to talk to us and say what is it take clarification ask doubts so all these things are combined in effort but that effort is backed by passion and beyond and above your effort and passion is the grace of the good lord leave it to the lord as to what he should do in your life because you should never feel reject dejected or rejected if you're not there it doesn't mean you should feel dejected you have to work harder there are many people who take six to seven attempts to come in that's that that's that's it that's it what that's what it is it needs that kind of hard work but and i want to i want to i want to also bring in a a small recitation and i request salim to salim to show it Salim, can you show me that recitation? Uddhyama sahasam dhairyam buddhi shakti parakramaha shadete yatra vartante tatra deva sahayatrita Now, this is not a prayer. This is a verse that we have in Sanskrit. Keep it on. Keep it on a few minutes. 
उद्यम What does it mean? Perseverance, hard work, sahasam. Sahasam is courage. Go out of your comfort zone. Go out of your comfort zone. You're getting food, nice food, nice clothes, nice movies to see, mobile. But get over that. Get beyond that. don't get locked up in your comfort if you have to struggle if you have to work with your father in his in the fields in the agricultural fields if you have to help your mother in the kitchen do all that if you have to help your younger brother to study do that if you have to go out and take care of some poor people do that so going out of yourself straining yourself yes we need to work so then dhairyam fearlessness nothing to be afraid of nothing and nobody to be afraid of you are doing what is correct and that faith is left enough to get you over any fears in due course then you have the intellect the capacity to think you all have capacity to think and you all have capacity to analyze you all have capacity to ask questions to understand to digest to assimilate whatever you are listening in class and you as children you have phenomenal memory you have phenomenal memory to remember everything so that is the skill that you have that is the resources that you have and then you have the capacity to overcome obstacles never feel afraid never feel afraid you know there was a girl in the central industrial security force who was thrown off a the train by some bad people men she lost her leg she lost her leg afterwards after the accident she had a surgery she got her artificial limbs and you know she reached mount everest where mount everest so nothing is impossible so if you over if you have all these qualities even providence will be helpful so we are talking about what this success the chemical combination effort plus grace and that is success now somebody might say such a hard work for a child ma'am no 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 avnish has said that class 6b such hard work for the child ma'am no ma'am avnish where is avnish now you can take off this uh, screen now avnish has got a good question where is avnish avnish says now i am coming to the point that he has raised see there are few things that you need to do you read few habits that you have to cultivate and i am coming to the point that avnish has raised read every day read something keep it aside and then say what did this say what did this this part which i read say try to recall what that part said you will get it in your mind say how did he say this point let me go back to the text so devote at least half an hour every day to reading something it may be a story it may be newspaper it may be a pamphlet it may be anything but read and apply your mind to it one important habit i'm not saying you are, you have a long, you have a long way now you're fin- if you finish 12th you still have about 4 5 years to come into the ias now you will lose contact with your school now between that period now shila ji is there mr devraj is there your principal is there they are bringing all of us together to talk to you but after 12th you will be 
left to do it on your own. The motivation that was given here when you were in the school has to be sustained for a longer period for you to reach that ultimate goal, right? Am I right? Yeah. So what will you, how will you do it? So you have to develop your own habits. That is the only way to sustain yourself beyond school in order to assimilate those habits, internalize those habits and keep doing those habits which are required for a civil service aspirant. So point number one is reading. As you grow older, you'll read more. Many people read, you know, even fiction, they read biography, they read religious books, they read spiritual books. So newspaper, editing, whatever is the editor saying, Hindu, English, whatever, whichever language you are comfortable with. Second, daily do some writing, any topic you want to write about, just do some writing. It may be creative, it may be your thought, Spend half an hour to write something that you want. That is very close to your heart. We cannot define what is close to your heart. You can, you can think of any situation that you are in and write about it. So reading is one important habit. Writing is another important habit. Right? Third thing. You know, you are all doing very good. You are all good children. School is teaching you to be nice. She is teaching you a lot of etiquette. And you are all interested in public service. Otherwise, this service is nothing. This is not domestic service. This is public service. This is not private service. This is public service. Whatever you do is public service. That boy which, who removed the leaves from the way in order to climb up was actually doing public service. He is not doing private service. He is not serving himself. He was serving everybody else. So in every thought that you do, there must be the spirit of public service. Just write down every day anything that you did for any other person, any other person. Say you have seen a, 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 a maybe you have seen a beggar on the road. Then did you ask the question, any question to him? Did you smile at somebody who is not happy? Did you give, share a kind word to somebody who's not happy? Did you go and sit with your grandfather and play with him for some time? You brought tear, you brought smiles to his, his face? Anything. You may have taken your brother or a small sister to the park. You may have gone into the kitchen and helped your mom. Mom, can I help you? Dad, help your dad. So all these are good deeds. These are good deeds. And they correspond to the aspect of public service that a civil service aspirant is supposed to have. Right? When something is going wrong, when somebody is crying, or when some, somebody is in trouble, you have to look at that. You cannot look the other way. Public service means looking into, not looking away. Intervening. Making a contribution, encouraging, supporting anybody else. You need support. You need to be mentored. You need to be coached. Every human being likes this. So if you're doing any good deed, just record it. Make a diary. Let there be a personal diary for a civil service aspirant. This is very important. Some of the in the in the interview, they will ask you, how did you get interested? What will you say? You have a whole history to tell. This is the history of your coming into the service. How you got motivated, how Sheila Ma'am did this, how Devrat sir did this, how Mr. Aman Kumar Dubey did this. What, what impact you had from the people you got exposed to as a child is going to be your lifelong friend. That experience itself is a friend for you till you reach that goal. And you continue that, continue to work with the same public spirits. It's not that you, you are always bothered for yourself, for your food, for your, for your clothes, for your house, for your, and then you are not bothered about public service. You cannot come into the public service. You, you are not a true aspirant of public service. You are not the genuine. I would say such people are fake. 
we want this habit to be inculcated even when you are young to always reach out to others who are in trouble and and the needy it they may be poor they may be rich they may be young they may be old they may be uh, grandfathers they may be male female tribal non tribal scheduled caste scheduled tribes anything it doesn't matter anybody in need you have to reach out so every day record something in your personal diary which will show the good deed that you did for the day and which made you happy is so satisfying to do work for others what satisfaction you get by helping yourself or only doing things for yourself rather selfishly is just a minute very little very small aspect of happiness but it becomes huge happiness immeasurable and ask the person whom you have helped what it meant to that person then that is where a civil service aspirant comes in. that's why i said that little boy is for me a model civil service aspirant be like that child now the next point always fine now it's covid time so you are all not able to go out that's fine but find some time to play always play avnish playing is part of being a civil service aspirant you know you need to play many people get access to some corporation ground or they may be doing running they may be doing ba badminton not tennis whatever is possible but try to do something which will you will make you exert yourself physically these days the research says that too many children are becoming very obese obese means becoming very fat even in younger age that's not good because it's not good for a long effective meaningful contributory life so physical activity is very very important now uh, how much you are able to definitely you have to reduce your sleep over a period of time if you are sleeping for 8 to 10 hours you have to reduce to 9 if it's 9 hours reduce to 8 if it's 8 hours 7 reduce to 7 and i remember that at the time of exams we hardly sleep for 2 3 hours you're not going to do all that now avnish you don't have to do all that now avnish sleep nicely now sleep enough play when you play you get good sleep when you play you become mentally very alert when you play you become sharp when you play you become observant when you play nicely you are always able to listen better because you are in that moment you are in that now moment now is the most beautiful time of my day so if you work in those ways so it means that it, it, you have to work very hard you have to apportion your time depending upon your convenience but your convenience has to be subservient subservient to the goal if it means that you know you can sleep less or you should eat less or you should not be wasting your time looking at things which really don't matter then you will have the time you will have be able to find the time mentally it's not that it's for some people work for 4 hours 5 hours you know because of good habits people get in in their minds a space that 4 hours looks like 14 hours to them but there are many people who sit for 14 hours and it will look like 4 hours only this is all in your mind right so i leave you with these words i want to you to i i want uh, if uh, chila ji and the institution and the, uh, you know if you can show the some of these videos i believe in immersion theory immerse them into good values we want people with aptitude to come into service but we want people with the best 
attitude to come into police into service aptitude and attitude are two different things right aptitude is mm, i must get into service but attitude is humility devotion perseverance courage fearlessness ability to overcome obstacles all the qualities that we describe right and the feeling that i must always put others need before mine and if i be always be empathetic helpful these are qualities which if you develop now you will truly be an ias aspirant ias first aspirant even if he comes into service without these qualities of passion without good attitudes will be a burden on the service please remember such people will use the service for their own good and not for public good so you have to be a model for yourself you have to learn to become a model citizen first a model child a model student a model citizen and our great abdul kalam ji how did he become president please think about him he was from a very poor family he could not afford to go to school he did not get books but from him we have to learn what is attitude many others will have aptitude now when you have aptitude to prepare for the services civil services if you back it up with attitude that is good attitudes then you reach altitude remember aptitude attitude altitude altitude means what height so when you reach that height if you have these values you will use all that the service gives you for the service of others and not for yourself you will all eventually become nation builders and what is civil service all about it's every action is for nation building every action that you do when you come into the service is for nation building the only and one and only only cause right everything else is secondary are you prepared for this think it over today i have talked to you i'll be coming in again with these small videos so that you know those we have to build our value systems we are not be going into is to become powerful and do wrong we are becoming powerful to do good okay so thank you so much i request the school to play these videos and also keep these values of perseverance and belief in the supreme power whenever they in 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 their entire life and to continue this even after they leave the school so there must be some hand holding with the children who are uh, continuing to do this even after they leave the school so that is where the school would play a very important role and uh, i think they'll bring name fame pride privilege honor to themselves first to the institution to the society and be become like abdul kalam when you get award a president or not you become like abdul kalam the quality of abdul kalam so keep that motto keep that in your mind right thank you so much sheila ji thank you thank you so much ma'am for being the source of inspiration to all our junior ias students thank you ma'am thank you ma'am to find the distinguished presence of an extremely inspirable person amongst us to motivate our junior ias aspirants we are really enlightened by your valuable information which will really be a starting point to continue the journey of our aspirants to achieve their dreams thank you ma'am thank you so much as of to the words of swami vivekananda we are what our thoughts have made us so take care about what you think words are secondary thoughts live they travel far if we ponder our thoughts then our thoughts will certainly lead us to the right road to success the words above were made true by our teacher
chief guest, Mr. Amin Kumar Dubey, Professor of Management, Motivational Speaker, Civil Service School. And let me quote few, only few of his achievements. So he has gained a lot. So I'm going to share only two of it. He, is, he has scored District Second in presenting 25 papers on worldwide areas uh, from agriculture to robotics at various national conferences and symposiums. And Sir has presented 15 business plans in various domains like manufacturing, IT services, and education. And he's the only individual in Tamil Nadu to have the experience of participating in over 300 college festivals, conferences, symposiums, and winning over 200 prizes. We are pleased to have yourself here. And now it's your time for yourself to enlighten our students and the through the virtual platform. Please, sir. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Bhamati, ma'am. Thank you to all the faculties of Vela Mal. At the outset, I would like to thank all of you for having me here and extreme apologies for the delay that uh, I had, you know, in joining. I am generally a very punctual person. I don't prefer uh, joining events late, whether they're offline or online. But since uh, the event that I was already a part in, uh, there was an event in the morning and it uh, got over a little late. So I would like to apologize to all of you for having made you wait uh, and uh, no, joining late. Thank yes. You, yeah. Thank you. Man. Yeah. So to my dear students of Velamal, uh, wishing you all a very good afternoon. And I know this is a Sunday and you all must be at your homes. Uh, you must be tired a little bit, maybe, you know, with the online sessions that are going on. So just to keep it short and uh, simple, uh, as Bhamati ma'am, you know, uh, she herself is, you know, a very widely respected and honored civil servant. And we all look up to her for inspiration, motivation. But I was able to get uh, what uh, she did tell at the last, a few of the things, you know, when I joined the session. She stressed on the concept of, you know, becoming a civil servant, not for the sake of power, but becoming a civil servant for the sake of power and in such a way that you can utilize that power for the betterment of the mankind, for the benefit of the mankind. You know, there are approximately 40 crore people in India who go hungry today without even a plate of food. As you all might be having your lunch, you know, a nice lunch in your homes of biryanis and parathas and whatever, there are 30 to 40 crore people in India who are still going hungry today. They'll not even have a morsel of food that you're having today, right? So there's a huge uh, area where you as kids, you know, you can work if you become a civil servant tomorrow or later on. Now, I would like to just quote an incident, you know, that I... Uh, have personally experienced and heard of about the power of civil services. Bamadi ma'am was uh, enlightening you all on how powerful the service is and what you can do and what you can become. This is a very small incident. There was a young kid who had just finished his 12th standard, very young and energetic kid. He stood outstanding in his uh, school education in 12th standard. He wanted to join a college for his MSc computer science degree. Okay. The college was based in Coimbatore. The name you might all have heard of PhD College of Technology, one of the very famous colleges in Coimbatore in terms of engineering. I'm talking of 1960s and 1970s. So the, this young aspirant uh, you know, who wanted to join an MSc computer science degree, he went to the college. The college said, uh, since you're poor and you cannot afford to pay the fee, you'll have to apply for a scholarship. He was eligible for the scholarship. Okay. But to apply for the scholarship, you need an income certificate, a document that will be given by the district authorities. Okay. This is 1960s. The gentleman belonged from Karur. Karur is a district in Tamil Nadu. You all know it very well. Okay. So now he had 10 rupees in his pocket back then. The transportation cost of traveling from Coimbatore to Karur back then was 2 rupees 50 pais. He paid the 2 rupees 50 pais, took a bus, went to his district. Now, it was 5 o'clock in the evening and next day morning, he had to submit his application, his scholarship application. Okay. So, he needed the income certificate. He went to the Tasaldar or whoever the clerk was there. The clerk demanded 1,000 rupee, I mean, 100 rupee back then as a bribe, as a bribe for him to issue the income certificate. Okay. 100 rupee. And how much is the kid having with him? 7 rupee 50 pais. You can imagine so this young kid, you know, he was very disappointed and he started crying. He sat just near the Tasildar's office. There was a nice garden, a shaded area. He just went and sat there. A young lady came. 
this lady must be in her late 20s maybe 30 years old so uh, you know he sat there and he was crying so this lady asked uh, kid why are you crying he told uh, he told his uh, you know issue that ma'am i'm so uh, you know experiencing so and so things the lady asked me okay show me the documents you have and show me the forms you have the lady took the form from him took him to his house made him sit offered him a glass of water you know he she pasted uh, some photographs and put some seals on the document and she just waited so he asked ma'am what are you doing who are you and what are you waiting for the lady said just please wait for a few minutes thereby came another young man 28 30 years old you know he was doing some jogging or something he came it looked at the document signed it and gave it to it gave it to the young kid the young man was no other than the then collector of sub collector of karur actually the lady was no other than his wife and the man who received the kid that time he was a kid you know who received the scholarship and based on that income certificate who received the income certificate that day is none other than professor balaguru sami you all must have widely uh, you know heard his name he has authored many books you must have read a book called as let us see which is one of the best books in c programming okay professor balaguru sami authored it later on he went on to become the vice chancellor of anna university in tamil nadu he also became the upsc chairman he was also a member of upsc and a chairman of upsc so imagine how wide how positive path you have you know when you get into civil services as ma'am was telling power to change lives of people imagine imagine your single signature can make a 12th standard kid a upsc chairman that is the power in your hands that is the power you have as a civil servant okay so this is entirely a very different field than you know generally what you would have heard of a lot of professions you know uh, you are open to take but civil service is that particular area where you can actually do service where you can serve to you know literally billions of people you know i strongly believe that today if you have to do good for people around you if you have to you know let's say build a school build a college or you know do something good to people you need two resources either you should have money or you should have power so if you have enough money if you have earned enough money ethically you can do yeoman service you can you know uh, render uh, your uh, philanthropic services to the people we all know azim prem ji you know one of the best philanthropists the country has donating about 10000 crores per annum that is one way to do service but the 10000 crore that uh, shri azim prem ji gives much more than that a secretary in the government of india can you know uh, give or transfer to the people okay when you are a bureaucrat you can build schools colleges a single signature of yours can change the lives of people around you okay that is your power okay and you don't have to you know wait for a right moment you know to come off an age or to finish a college degree to start your civil services profession you take the 2016 uh, civil services topper mrs tina dabi she was all india rank 1 she studied for you know she started studying from her 10th standard in her first attempt she was able to get all india rank 1 so don't you all believe that that is something really majestic that is something really wonderful now are the children able to hear me and uh, do they have queries if they have the queries also i'm open to take them what happens uh, and how how does how does this entire civil service circle begin how does it start always imagine if you start young if you start early you can succeed at it you know very quickly we all know about uh, sachin tendulkar an excellent sports person why was he able to succeed because he started young so i believe for all of you starting young in civil services is very very important okay you should start preparation of your examinations you should start reading books in current affairs right from your the moment you know i believe in your if you are in 6th standard 7th standard that's an appropriate age you know i remember when i was back in school in 6th or 7th standard i used to go to library even in the pt hours i'll go and sit in the library and take sit and take in uh, read almost all the books that was you know accessible or available okay so based on that i was able to uh, qualify for the interview twice uh, civil services interview twice this year also i've written my mains and i'm uh, waiting for my results so that's what reading books reading uh, you know being aware of what is happening around you reading a lot of current affairs i believe these are all starting points you should follow okay have a good habit of reading newspaper the hindu the indian express whatever newspapers you can afford or whatever is accessible to you 
Okay, please make use of those resources. Start reading newspaper on a daily basis. I believe it is a very good habit. You know, when I was in school, I was able to, uh, you know, uh, participate in a lot of quiz competitions. You know, you must have heard of this Arogya Milk, Arogya Milk Chutti Vigad and Quiz Quiz. You know, I was one of the district winners back then. The Hindu Young World Quiz. Okay, so these are very nice uh, opportunities where you can learn, enjoy the learning process. and be successful also just imagine reading a newspaper every day can give you enough knowledge to you know uh, you win uh, those quiz competitions and at the same time you will also be preparing for your civil services exam okay so please start uh, preparing for your civil services by reading newspapers okay have a habit of reading newspapers on a daily basis as soon as you wake up in the morning i believe all of you would be getting newspapers at your home if you are not getting you can request your parents for the same start reading those newspapers on a daily basis okay don't make any notes out of them read those newspapers on a daily basis have a dictionary with you in case you are not able to understand the meaning of certain complex words you can have a dictionary so that you can know the meaning okay and then always please read a lot of books you know reading a lot of books is going to be one of the most uh, key skills that i believe will help you no matter what you are going to become whether you are going to be a civil service aspirant a doctor an engineer a professor a teacher a scientist read a lot of books i personally encourage kids you know to have their library buy small small books start reading them today over a period of 30 years i have built a library where i have 4000 books so right from mythology to medicine from law to science from astronomy to medical uh, you know mechanical engineering i have books on all these topics in my library and i have read every single one of them almost 4000 books not in a year but over a period of years so it is very very important that you all start to practice of reading books other than your subject books obviously subject books are very very important you have to learn you have to you know uh, have the knowledge of them also remember that when you are studying your history geography politics economics science whatever you are studying in your schools they form the foundation of your civil services syllabus so if you are good in your school if you have studied your school subjects thoroughly you can uh, easily clear the civil services examination because your school education that you are undergoing is probably the most crucial phase so make sure that whatever your teachers you know i know velamal has excellent teachers i have heard of them you know very widely so whatever teachers are teaching you whichever subject please read them thoroughly because they are extremely important they are extremely important if you have to be successful tomorrow in your life okay clearing civil services the base of it lies in two things basically one is your newspapers and other is your uh, school textbooks even now when i go across and i tell people as to how how should they prepare for civil services or how have how have i been able to you know go to interview so many times or uh, how did i start my prepare preparation if you look the base of it is actually ncrts your school textbooks right yes so reading those ncrt textbooks and school textbooks and uh, you know understanding them thoroughly solving the book back questions i believe this is the way you in which you can actually become a civil servant okay very basic very easy formula okay plus with that your newspapers and another uh, thing that bamati ma'am was also telling that you know being a good human being that power you know that power that you get after clear clearing the civil service examination is a huge amount of power okay but there are chances that huge amount of power can corrupt you it can weaken your thoughts so my suggestion is that start practicing or start learning to be ethical start learning the moral values honesty courage okay see civil service exam is not uh, something easy i would say i would suggest that you know it's a long process here where you have to put in a lot of effort in the meantime you should persevere you should have the skill of persevering perseverance i believe is a key skill to clear the civil service examination i have a lot of my friends who were able to clear it in the first attempt i have a lot of my friends who were able to clear it in the fifth attempt who were able to do it now what was the difference there was not much of a difference just a little bit of luck i would say here and there but the person who cleared it in the fifth time definitely had more perseverance than the person who cleared it in the first time yes so people who have cleared it in the fifth attempt or sixth attempt 
They have persevered for that, that long. They have not given up on their goal. You all must know about Hussein Bolt, right? Your Hussein Bolt, the famous Nigerian runner who has a lot of world records uh, with him. You know, when he started running, he was not even the top in his country. But he started pursuing it very, very aggressively. He started, you know, uh, taking the goal very, very aggressively. He started preparing. And today he holds the world record of sprint, you know, 100 meters in 9.8 seconds. I believe it is less than that, 9.7 or 9.8. That's something really wonderful. So I would encourage all of you, you know, to uh, persevere at whatever goals you have. See, you guys are in an age, you guys are in, an, in a period, you're living in a time which is powerful, which, you know, which will change the course of nations. I believe that the era of 2000 to 2050, you know, this 50 years, half a century, I believe is going to be uh, a significant force or it is going to be a significant uh, change, you know, that is going to happen. If there's, a, if there's a transformation that is going to happen across the countries, across the world, it will be happening in these initial 50 years, in the initial 50 years, from 2000 to 2050. And you are living in this decades, you are living in this century. You know, you are blessed with information technology, with computers, with internet, with mobile phones, as ma'am was telling, you know, utilizing them appropriately in a proper method, utilizing them, you know, uh, in a way in which you can accomplish your goals is very, very important. You should know that fine, you know, line dividing what is good and what is bad. Ma'am told about mobile phones and computers, you know, you should know how to use them appropriately. I am not someone who says that do not use mobile phones. But if you have a computer or if you have a, a, a digital device through which you can access uh, internet, that is sufficient. It does not have to be a mobile phone. Okay. Start preparing. Uh, start using your mobile phones positively, your devices positively, you know. Learn a lot of things through your uh, current affairs and newspapers and all of that. Okay. So basically learn how to use your digital tools, uh, you know. It's very, very important. Now civil service preparation earlier was focused only with books. Now, book as well as research done on the internet is very, very important. You have to do a lot of research, a lot of uh, scavenging for materials, a lot of notes preparation. All this has to be done on computers. So you should know, you should be fluent with your digital skills. Okay? You should know how to use them uh, appropriately. Okay? Now, for, uh, to, just to give you a brief idea of what is civil service examination, I'll tell you uh, what is the age and all that and how can you prepare. Basically, once you're 20 and 21 years old, you can start applying for the examination. The examination currently has three levels. Okay. Examination currently has three levels. The first level of the examination is called as the preliminary examination, where you have two papers. The preliminary is a completely objective paper where you will be writing multiple choice questions. Okay. You will be just bubbling, filling in the bubbles in the OMR sheet, you know, optical uh, sheets. In the paper one, you have 100 questions from history, geography, polity, economics, environment, art and culture, science and tech, and other sub subjects. So 100 questions in the paper one, okay, each question carries two marks. So totally you have 200 marks. Each carry question carries a negative marking of 0.6 also. Okay. So if you get the answer correct, you get two marks. If you get it wrong, you get minus 0.66. Okay. So for 200 marks, Ideally, you just have to score 50 to 55 percentage. That is 100 to 110 marks to clear the examination. Okay. Nothing more than that. 100 to 110 marks. Then the paper two, it is the civil services aptitude test or CSAT, where you will be having questions from aptitude, questions from English. You know, to clear that uh, particular paper, you need to be very good with your mathematical aptitude skills. Okay. Now understand aptitude is dis different and mathematics is different. Please do not confuse between them. Okay. For those who you want to, those of you uh, who want to pursue aptitude and you want to study it thoroughly, there are two books. Okay. One is R.S. Agarwal, Quantitative Aptitude. Other one is R.S. Agarwal, Verbal and Non-Verbal Reasoning. Okay. These two books are fantastic books if you want to prepare for uh, your, uh, you know, your uh, aptitude papers. Okay. If you want to pre prepare for your aptitude papers, you have uh, these particular books which you can buy and you can practice on them. They are the fundamental. Now, once you clear the preliminary examination, you go to the next level. That is the mains examination. In the mains examination, you have nine papers. Okay, nine papers. One of them has to be English. 
the other paper has to be you know on a language paper it can be hindi tamil telugu kannada malayalam sanskrit anything that you want for that matter and after that you have one essay paper okay which is for 250 marks and four general studies paper okay which is nothing but a combination of history geography and all such things okay all the subjects will be combined and you have four gs papers one essay paper two uh, language papers clear so totally nine papers in the mains examination out of which seven are scoring papers and two are qualifying papers okay two papers you just have to write and qualify them and the remaining seven papers you have to score okay so for each of those seven papers you have 250 marks okay so how much approximately how much marks are you having 1750 marks is the mains examination then you go for a personality test which is you know people call it as an interview i believe it's not an interview it's a personality test okay where they take test your you know personality aspects of your personality not your knowledge i am a strong believer of that now at the personality test you have for 275 marks okay so 1750 plus 275 approximately it's 2025 marks now for this 2025 marks uh, examination that you write you just have to score 50 percentage to become an all india rank 1 so imagine for 2025 you merely have to score a 1020 or 1030 marks to you know to get the all india rank 1 50 percentage is sufficient i believe you know you will have there will be a lot of students who might be scoring 80 90 95% in your classes right you don't have to score that much just a 50% marks you know the combined score of prelims and mains is sufficient to make you an ias officer okay so i believe uh, this will be uh, sufficient okay uh, to clear the examinations i believe initially this is what you require at this age at this young tender age where you are you have lot of energy where you have lot of creative power within you i would suggest all of you to start doing a few things first as ma'am told that exercise go out and play something do some bicycling do some running you know swim if you can uh, you know start playing shuttle tennis badminton whatever at least for half an hour to 40 minutes a day okay it's very very important it will keep you fit you know there's a very famous say, uh, saying right that we all would have heard that a sound mind in a sound body yes so a sound mind in a sound body is the key to a good base for a good life as well as a good career if you are not fit if you are not healthy no matter whether you are nias whether you are a chief minister whether you are the prime minister if you are not healthy you are going to suffer right you will not be able to give your best you will not be able to put your the best foot forward okay so please take care of your health do exercise some sort of exercise 30 to 45 minutes every single day also have a lot of healthy food you know the kind of food you have impacts your brain a lot having having you know too many strong sugary foods too much of you know foods laden with carbohydrates i believe is not good have you know good healthy food fruits and vegetables limited quantities okay that is you know uh, very very important then start practicing newspapers as i have told you reading newspapers aptitude is going to be a revolution i believe you need to learn aptitude if you have to clear uh, you know any of the exams whether it is civil services or any competitive exam for that matter cat mat whatever it is aptitude forms the foundation of it and your school textbooks they are very 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 important you will be shocked to know if you come to my house and if i someday show you the uh, a photograph of my library you have ncert books school textbooks are there i basically read the same textbooks that you are reading okay that is how important your textbooks are your classes are so please make sure that whatever classes that you are currently you know attending in your schools you attend to it carefully because that knowledge is the base on which you are going to build the beautiful building of civil service okay so that knowledge is the base i believe so with this i believe i have given uh, all of you a fair idea of as to what is civil services and how should you prepare now i prefer i would prefer that you know if you have doubts and queries uh, you can go ahead uh, ma'am if students have queries uh, please uh, the, enable I, them yes, yes sir was sheila was sheila to uh, make them either use the chat or if they, if they raise their hands i think if they raise yes. the videos are yes, all open and they raise the hands then we can call the person and ask the question because yes, sure, sure. nobody has we given any question on the chat for, for format here yeah. yes there are no questions in the chat format i saw the two three hands uh, you know were raised dt amudan then i think arvind raj 
they had raised and asked the children yes. to read and ask questions yes kids if you have uh, if you have queries or doubts or questions of any kind please feel free start interacting yes. ask your so questions the portion for ias is like uh, from 5th to plus 2 like that is there is a limited from uh, this standard to this much or uh, there is a particular limit amudan very good question amudan for civil services i believe 6th standard to 12th standard books school textbooks they form the base of it okay so 6th to 12th standard textbooks in your schools when when you are being taught when your teachers are teaching you please learn them nicely because don't just think that this is for school remember st- studying nicely in school will you know help you in the civil service exam also for example i was always fond of economics in my school i studied economics very nicely today in the entire civil service paper if there's one paper which i am very fond of it is economics i teach economics to mba students also i teach economics to civil service students also and i enjoy economics why did that happen because i had read economics very nicely in my uh, uh, during my school times okay so 6th standard to 12th standard textbooks is the syllabus for civil services that's the base that along with newspaper is sufficient for now as you grow up as you grow older okay the, we will tell you a lot of other uh, books that you can read but as of now your textbooks from 6 to 12 is more than sufficient okay okay i believe all the students of velamal are all clear and you know <laughs> they are all uh, hopefully you know I, i we are all definitely very happy with that so maybe 10 years down the line you know when i was in my 40 or 50s i should see a lot of people coming out and becoming bureaucrats from this particular batch so yes ma'am you can uh, i'm here you can take over thank you i want to just mention that mr aman uh, kumar dube is from working for king makers academy he is looking looking after the coimbatore uh, setup and uh, we very thankful that you could ma- make it to this uh, session uh, thank you very much sir for leading all of our junior ias aspirants it was thank an you. initiation for all our aspirants to set out with confidence and wisdom on the journey to make their dreams come true and dear students i hope this session would be a uh, eye opening session as well as informative and interesting session for you all and as ma'am said mr dube he serves as a head of it and strategy in king makers academy ias academy and also he is a faculty of management optional economics security and environment students i hope this session would be really a very very useful one to you in your life and a thankful heart is not only the great virtue but the parent of all other virtues with this grateful note it has been our fortune to find distinguished presence of extremely busy persons amongst us to motivate our junior ias aspirants we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence and also your valuable information thank you so much ma'am and sir Thank Bela you. Bela Mal always reiterates education is an effective tool for all the students in all the fields. Our platform of learning is sure a launch pad to undergo learning in civil service too. My hearty gratitude to our honourable chairman, sir, director, sir, director, academics, ma'am, for giving us an opportunity to, to arrange this orientation program, which is an initiative to our trails to enter civil service system. And thanks to all the higher authorities of our sister concern and VKP. and also the students for making this session a useful one on behalf of elamal knowledge park i once again thank ms bamadi ias ma'am and mr dube for their gracious presence and their valuable suggestions and informations to all our students thank you ma'am and thank you sir thank you thank you one and all